Hey, 412, happy Sunday week of quarantine, COVID mm. mess in currently. Um, it's about to get shelter in place starting tomorrow. So we're keeping all of you guys in our prayers as we take it kind of to the next level of lockdown. We hope you guys got out today and enjoyed this beautiful weather. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. Our family was outside about the whole day and we loved it. Um, and we also hope that you guys have found some time to rest and have a Sabbath and enjoy time with your family, with yourself, to reflect, um, all that good stuff. I know that's what we've been talking about for the past couple weeks. So we hope that you've had time to do that. I've heard from a lot of you that you're bored and you don't know what to do so what better time to make time to just kind of rest and reflect on life and and things um jackson's going to talk a little bit about doing just that and um we kind of we have an idea for you he's going to kick it off with a bible verse this yeah afternoon. so we're going to talk about some gratitude uh but before we get into that i'm going to set the stage by reading ecclesiastes 3 um, a time for everything a very famous well-known verse uh, fitting for today uh, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to uproot a time to kill and a time to heal a time to tear down and a time to build a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search, and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, time for war and a time for peace um gratitude uh, over the course of the past several days uh we've been thinking about this concept of gratitude and how to find gratitude in uh, moments when it just is hard to come by when it doesn't naturally seem fitting that you would be appreciative of what's going on um today i realized just how appreciative i am for this time um, that we don't live, although I, my heart goes out for those folks, uh, for people in urban settings where they're right on top of each other and the virus is uh, profound and um, it's very communicable and it's spreading, I guess, uh, in areas like that. But we're very here, we're spread out. Uh, doesn't mean we need to ignore uh, all, the, all of these recommendations to stay away from each other, but at least we're spread out. And I'm thankful for that. Um, I'm also thankful for the time that I've had with my family today we were very intentional about uh, setting aside time and being with each other and doing things in this weather we we took a bike ride um, and we we planted a garden which a lot of people plant gardens this time of year and we have before in the past but today it just felt different uh, it felt very special I was more in the moment um, I was I was very present uh, it just felt very uh, thankful to be doing it uh, we were able to go to Home Depot and buy some stuff and come back and work on it together. Um, it just, again, I don't know how to describe it, but it just felt different. Um, I just felt more appreciative of it than I normally would have, I think. And that's a side effect, I think, of our current setting. But um, I wanted to recommend a book. Um, this is a gratitude journal. Uh, you don't have to use this particular book, but it's just, it does set the framework for how to be very intentional. Like I said, you know, it's not very natural uh, to, to be grateful in all situations, although we're supposed to be. We're called to be grateful throughout it all, uh, the good, bad, and the ugly. Um, but our natural instincts are to not so much do that. It's probably pretty close to the opposite of that. So we've got to overcome our natural instincts. And in order to do that, uh, you, you might need some kind of guide to help frame uh, that way of thinking. Um, in a gratitude journal, would help with that. Um, you don't have to do it this way. You could just have um, a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, and you could jot down how you're feeling and what you're thinking. You could just chronicle uh, what's going on these days, and I think that would be beneficial for you down the road two years from now, five years from now, 10 or 20 years from now. You could look back and 
because these are sort of historic times, I think, um, with this response and the way that the world around us has changed just like that. Um, and we're changing with it and we're right here and we have our feelings and our thoughts about it. And you should put that, that uh, pen to paper. I think um, you might be grateful that you did that. Um, and so, yeah, that's my piece. Gratitude journal. Um, there's a time for everything. And in every, in every situation, you, you got to try to be grateful. So I've been digging through all of my devotional books in search of some good stuff to read um, the past three weeks, which I typically don't have time to read. So I'm grateful for time to actually read and um, go through some books that I really, really love and I haven't had time to look at. But anyways, I came across an oldie but goodie. It's, old, it's, it's older. Some of you might have it. It's called Jesus Calling. It's a devotion book. And I just opened it to today's this morning to just, just to see what today's said. I don't really read it every day. Um, I did a few years ago, and then I kind of got out of the habit. But uh, March 29th, this is what it said. And I thought it was appropriate for today, and I wanted to share it with you. Stop trying to work things out before their times have come. Accept the limitations of living one day at a time. When something comes to your attention, ask me whether or not it is part of today's agenda. If it isn't, release it into my care and go on about today's duties. When you follow this practice, there will be a beautiful simplicity about your life, a time for everything and everything in its time. A life lived close to me is not complicated or cluttered. When you focus on my presence, many things that once troubled you will lose their power over you. Though the world around you is messy and complicated and confusing, remember that I have overcome the world. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. That just spoke to my heart today, and I wanted to share it with you, 412. Um, it's messy, and it's complicated, and life changes on a daily basis right now, and it's scary. Um, a lot of us are feeling all of those things, and like me, you want to go help people. You want to, like, be with people, and that's the one thing we can't do, and that is... Not that we can help people, we can help, but that it, it's hard not to be with people and help them the ways that we normally help them. So, my challenge to you this week is every day reach out to, I'm telling myself three people. I'll tell you, you can start with one or two, but reach out every day to one or two people. Call them, text them, email them, go stand in their front yard from six feet away and talk to them in the driveway, but um, tell them that you love them, tell them that you're, what can I pray for you about? How can I help you? Um, a lot of our older generation needs help just getting out to the grocery store or the pharmacy or stuff like that. So really try to reach out to your neighbors um, and, and see where God leads you to help others this week. Um, gratitude and helping will get us through this week if we don't 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 think about ourselves too much let's think about um others and gratitude and all that good stuff um we love you we miss playing crazy games with you on sunday i told everybody this is like so weird for me i'm still not used to this virtual youth group stuff but we're making it work and i look forward to sunday nights and if you have any prayer requests any needs feel free to text me email me reach out to me um all your faith keepers have you in their hearts and your prayers and we hope your families are safe and healthy so we are going to end tonight with our benediction um so if you're watching at home or if you watch this later on um do right over left it's kind of hard for jackson and i to do right over left because we're holding the camera but anyways we're going to say the benediction tonight all right May, May the, the Lord, Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Love you guys. Hang in there. We're in this together. Talk to you next Sunday or if not before. Okay.